Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's episode I'm going to build another cartridge for the Commodore 64 and as you can see my Norwegian Santa is sitting here anxiously waiting for a game however he's gonna have to wait a little bit longer because we are building a cartridge and I'm gonna use this very nice PCB that's produced by PCBWay from their shared projects site. Let me just take a moment to thank my sponsor PCBWay who supports this channel. PCBWay offers a wide range of services for PCB prototyping. You can upload your own designs and uh, get uh, your PCBs produced and delivered uh, for a very affordable price within days. Besides that, they also do advanced PCBs, PCB assembly and CNC machining and 3D printing. Right now they are hosting their Christmas festival 2021 where they have uh, big sales and they have free Christmas coupons, special offers and a lucky draw. So please visit PCB Way to check it out. And now back to the video. And here I got the uh, 2ST27C128 uh, uh, erasable EEPROMs and uh, I'm gonna solder those in. And also I need to find uh, two reset uh, switches and uh, two 100 nanofarad capacitors. But before we solder these, we need to program them because uh, there's uh, no data on these right now. First of all, we need to find the correct uh, software uh, to burn onto these EEPROMs. And uh, I went to Commodore.software and searched for a dead test and a diagnostics cartridge. And here I found both. So I just download those. Luckily, these uh, zip files uh, contains already the bin version of the cartridge. So there's no need for running a cart convert from CRT to bin. Alrighty, I'm ready to burn the first uh, EEPROM and uh, the direction you put it into the programmer, uh, you see the notch here, should go against this lever uh, to the leftmost position. By the way, this is a XG EQ Pro. Uh, this is a clone of the more famous uh, uh, version this is a TL8662 plus compatible programmer. I bought this quite cheap on eBay. I think it was around 50 US dollars. Both these ROMs are 8 kilobyte uh, big and they could actually in fact fit on one uh, EEPROM but uh, I'm gonna have one on each and uh, the EEPROMs are 16k large but that doesn't have anything to say. I have loaded up um, the programmer software here and already selected the correct chip, uh, the NMC27C128B. It's not uh, the exact same uh, brand because my chips are ST and I selected this Fairchild, but uh, I have used it before and it uh, works just fine. So now I just uh, load the first binary and now we need to keep track. I'm gonna load uh, the dead test first. And that's basically uh, it. Uh, most of the settings are actually the defaults you want for this operation. So we can actually now uh, hit the program button and uh, then program. Oops, uh, is the chip correctly inserted? Uh, let's check. I just uh, inserted it again. Hmm. Let's try once more. Now I took off this check ID uh, mark before I program it. Let's try once more. Yeah, that was it. I forgot you need to um, remove the check ID. So this succeeded and we can actually uh, read it back now or verify it uh, again just to see that it is the same content and it is. So that was the dead test uh, now I'm gonna load uh, into the memory the uh, diagnostics test. So now we need to switch out and keep a track on uh, what is what. So this was the dead test and this is the diag test. 
All right, let's uh, program. Yeah, verified, succeeded, we're done. Now we got what we need, the PCB, two realms, two capacitors and two switches. Ow! <laughs> Hurt myself. <laughs> Look. All right, ready to solder. And these boards are so uh, clean and nice that uh, there's no need for any flux. While soldering the last chip, I noticed that uh, one of the pins for the chip did not go through and it was actually bent on the other side, so I decided to cut it off instead of uh, <laughs> trying to <laughs> desolder the chip again. And then I'm gonna just fix it by a little, uh, little wire sticking up here and then I can solder the chip uh, leg onto that. So now you can see that uh, leg over there is bent out. I just bend it down against uh, the pin I soldered in and uh, we can solder that, bridge those together. Yeah, like that. That should work. No harm done. <laughs> The leftover flux does not look good on this uh, nice white board, so I'm gonna clean it off, of course, with some uh, alcohol. All right, that looks great. Uh, I should perhaps find a case for it, but I don't have any with uh, double-sided uh, cartridge uh, openings, so this will do. All right, so I'm gonna insert the dead test first. Dead test takes a while to load. All right, there it is. C64 dead test and this machine is working just fine so I'm not gonna do any more diagnostics testings on it. <laughs> then the diagnostics test. Yeah. Revision 586220. Nice. All right, that was it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and a special thanks to my Patreons. See you, bye bye.